pass the meeting <coughs> over to Michael. He's going to tell us about our snap. Hi, folks. Um, David, thanks for that lovely DNS talk. I'm actually going to start off by giving something away. Yeah. I have a book on DNSSEC that I'll give to whoever can tell me, uh, whoever can win the contest for most horrifying DNS setup. This is your chance. Come on. What have you done with DNS that was just truly appalling? Uh, yes, sir. Set up like 10,000 suppliers to all use a domain name that can't move. Can't move? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you win. I'm not going to take any other, any other offers. No. <laughs> well done. <laughs> or, or not. Um, and, and the winner was set up 10,000 suppliers to use a unchangeable domain name. You're in hell, sir. <laughs> okay, Tarsnap. Uh, hi, thanks for coming. My name is Michael Lucas. Uh, I worked as a sysadmin for 20 years or so and did Unix for 10 years or so before that. Uh, I'm uh, generally known as a BSD guy, and he here are a, a few of the latest books I have out. So let, let's talk about backups. How many of you have been responsible for tapes? <laughs> okay. Uh, Sysadmins, we're really, really good at data. If it doesn't exist, if you can't touch it, we're all over it. If you can kick at it, we kind of suck. Um, the overwhelming majority of sysadmins cannot even keep their desk clean. And here we are giving them boxes and boxes of little plastic cartridges that have the company data on it and saying, here, Mr. Disorganized, keep these in line. And when, when you really need it, you better be able to lay your hand on the right tape. Um, we may logically understand backup schemes, like uh, anyone use the Tower of Hanoi? <laughs> ah, yes, that's two people. What is that? That, that's a backup system for optimizing and maximizing the life of tape, back from when tapes were really expensive. I encourage you to look it up, uh, because for those of you who are young, this will convince you that your life is good. <laughs> and you never had to deal with that crap. You've never had to deal with it. You'll understand why us old people I'm just glad I don't have to deal with tapes anymore. Yes. <laughs> Other systems like grandfather, father, son. How many of you have... Okay, we, we have more of those. So, uh, personally, I, I just decided that tapes were cheaper than intelligence and ran a weekly complete backup and then a differential every night of the week mm -hmm. and replaced tapes as they wore out. But we still have the problem of managing these little plastic boxes. And the label never sticks on the little plastic box. And when you send your tape monkey out and say, get the tape labeled third Monday of the month, <laughs> there are two variables in that sentence, and the tape monkey will screw up one of those. Or there'll be two tapes with the same label. Or there will be two tapes with the same label, or the glue will have failed on the tape, and he'll bring back every unlabeled tape <laughs> in the tape room. Couldn't find it. Worse is the box of dead tape. You've gone through these tapes. You know that these tapes are crap. Mm -hmm. You will never use these tapes again. Except there is a chance, it's a small chance, but there is a chance that you may need one of these tapes in some horrible circumstance. 
So, although everything in you knows that this box of tapes should go in the trash or in the shredder or somehow be removed from the building, no, you're going to keep the box and you're going to put it in the back because no one will notice it's there. <laughs> That's fine with one box. Six months later, you add another box. <laughs> Five years later, your tape room is unusable. So, we're really crap at physical things. So great, these days backup is everywhere. Sorry, bandwidth is everywhere. And yes, backup is everywhere. Everyone has an online backup service. Um, and, and I actually support this because if you suck at a job, give the job to someone who doesn't <laughs> suck at it. <laughs> Backups are something I don't want any suck. <laughs> I, I, I firmly support the sucks less philosophy, but for backups, no, I, I want backups to work. But this opens up some security questions. Now, computer security is a combination of three things. Confidentiality. You want only authorized people to be able to see your data. Integrity. You want your data to be unchanged from what you say it is. And availability. You want the data available when you want it. And this opens up some interesting things with online backups and security. There's always the Hollywood black hat hacker. Uh, I'm really glad that Hollywood actually isn't doing a movie with a title like that because I'm, I'm sure it would really suck. Um, the, the bad guy, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, the bad guy who wants your data is going to break into this online backup service and you have to trust their security. Um, competitors, if, if I run a company and I make widgets, uh, and someone wants my secret widget making process. One possible way to get that would be get in my online backups. Um, then you have credits. The internet is full of them. We were just talking about AOL getting bought by Time Warner. Uh, seeing that there is still some value in credits. So, you, you don't want some random Yahoo on the internet deciding he doesn't like you and is going to break in and steal your data and make it public. Um, some backup services are also kind of iffy. Uh, they may have a beautiful web page, they may have people who have used them successfully, but when the bits hit the disk, how usable are they really? Can you trust that they have gotten all of your data to disk? Um, and then there's a question of lawful disclosure. If, if I make widgets and a government agency comes to me with a warrant and says someone is using your company in an illegal manner, they're funneling money to a weasel smuggling ring, and we need this information <coughs> to catch them. If I want to comply, which I, I probably do, I don't like weasel smugglers any more than the next guy, um, I will invite them in and say, here are the books, this is the data you want. The online backup service will have a, have a different take on it. They'll say, great, sure, come on in. Here is all the data this company has ever sent us. Um, and if this is a warrant, this data may go as evidence in a court. Now, I make the best widgets in the world. <coughs> My process for making widgets is confidential. Once that goes into the court record, Anybody can access that information. I want to comply with the law. I want to help law enforcement, but I don't want them knowing my widget process. 
And I certainly don't want it in the court record for anyone to look at. So, each of these pose some challenge to confidentiality, integrity, or availability. So, what is tar snap and why do I like it? Tar snap is yet another online backup service. Uh, the, some interesting things about it though is it's encrypted. And all of the encryption, every bit of it, happens client side. It, the data is encrypted before it leaves your system. The data is also deduplicated. Uh, our systems have huge amounts of redundant data. <coughs> TAR snap breaks that up into blocks, uh, exactly like TAR. And uh, we'll ship it off in those blocks, and it, eat, it only stores any given block one time. Um, the blocks are variable sized, so it can intelligently deduplicate. Um, your data is stored in uh, a cloud service run atop uh, Amazon AWS, which uh, has pluses and minuses, but so far they really are, are the best target for such a thing. Uh, the company is painfully honest. They come out and say what happened, where their performance problems were, how they've addressed them. Um, and, the, and how many of you have used TAR? Now, if you put aside the 300 different file or command line options in TAR, <laughs> really TAR is pretty simple. You make files, you, you bundle up files, you extract files. Mm -hmm. uh, TAR snap looks very, very much like TAR. Uh, and it's really the first commercial software that I played with and used, and I said, hey, I, I actually want to use this. And not only do I want to use this, I want to write about it. So, is TarSnap open source? No, no. The client code is open for people to read, study, learn from, audit, and break. Uh, and the TarSnap company pays bounties if you find a problem with the code. They range from a dollar for a typo uh, to thousands for actual security problems. And they have paid these bounties. They have a list on their web page of what bounties have been paid. The nice thing about the code being open is you no longer have to trust. You can look at the code and, and see how the data is encrypted before it leaves your system. Uh, it also comes with a variety of reusable open source components that are free to be reused under the BSD license. Uh, Scrypt for key derivation, the Kivalu data store, and the SPIPE D secure pipe daemon. That they're all fairly small tools, but people are using them for interesting things. So, one of the reasons I like TarSnap is because I'm cheap. I don't like to spend money. The, the only time I spend cash is when spending the money is cheaper than spending my time. TarSnap is priced in Pico dollars. <laughs> um, you pay exactly for the storage you use and the bandwidth you use. 250 Pico dollars per deduplicated byte of <laughs> a byte month of storage or a byte of bandwidth. Well, why Pico dollars? Uh, the, the term gigabyte is ambiguous. Some people say it should be in base 8. Some people say it's base 10. <laughs> By calling it picodollars, it's completely unambiguous. 
Uh, these are base 10 gigabytes. Uh, the, the guy who wrote TarSnap, Colin Percival, actually considered making uh, TarSnap cost 12 atto dollars per bit second. <laughs> Uh, but decided that was a little hard to track. So this comes down to a quarter per gigabyte. They will hold my data for a month. It'll cost me 25 cents to upload it, and 25 cents for them to hold it for a month. I will pay that happily if it means I don't have to worry about backup. For example, I, I have a year of archives of my mail machine. There are 350 gigabytes of backup. Uh, once deduplication comes into play, this comes down to 5.7 gigabytes. <laughs> I pay a little over a dollar a month <laughs> for my backup of this machine. I will pay that dollar. Um, and to get started with TarSnap, you have to stick a whole five, you, have, you create an account and a minimum payment of five dollars. Uh, I suspect that some of you have put more than five dollars in the cookie jar this evening, seeing as all the cookies are gone. Um, so, what does TarSnap run on? Uh, anything vaguely Unix-like. Uh, OS X, of course, and I run TarSnap on my Windows machine to back up my writing files uh, through SIGWIN. The target users are people who can use TAR. This probably rules out some of our parents, uh, some of our coworkers. Spouses. Some of the people in marketing, <laughs> but I was in marketing for two decades. And you got you were in marketing for two decades, and you got better. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and you got out. So, installation, configure, make, make, install. You know this. There are prerequisites. They're on the web page. To get started. Uh, you have to register your machine, give it the username, uh, which is your email address that you created an account with, and the name of the machine you're backing up. It'll prompt you for your password and create a TarSnap key file. And the first thing you do is back up your key. <coughs> this key is critical for getting your files back out of TarSnap. If the key is destroyed, you cannot access those files. Uh, TarSnap cannot help you. They have no ability to decrypt your files. Like that. Um, one important thing is don't back up your key in TarSnap. <laughs> <laughs> if you have all of your systems on a single cloud provider, and you think, oh, I'll just back up each key on the other machines in the cloud. Uh, when that cloud provider decides that they no longer support your operating system or that you suck and they're just going to turn you off, if you don't have those keys, you're out of luck. Take it, put it on some permanent media like uh, even a piece of paper in an OCR friendly format, stick it in a safe deposit box, uh, which may be overkill for your home network, but if you're running a business, you have a safe deposit box anyway. <laughs> so, I think that command line, other than the word snap, <laughs> should look very familiar to just about everybody in mm -hmm. this room. Create a tar minus C to create, minus F to name an archive, the name of the archive and what you're backing up. 
and it will tar snap will start the first time you run it will create a cache directory it will remove the leading slash from member names which we should all know what that is and then it will say how large your archive is both in this data and new data by default it prints bytes which you can change easily enough to recover an archive tarsnap minus xf and the archive name um, the nice thing is tarsnap thanks to deduplication you can keep months or years of backups and it doesn't cost you very much more uh, I have 20 years of email archived on my mail server uh, at one point I said I had every me email I ever received but then <coughs> some jerk invented spam <laughs> uh, <laughs> Where does the deduplication take place? On the client side? Or on the client side. side. Deduplication so happens so on the client. So there's a database of all the hashes of all the blocks? There something? is a database of hashes of the blocks uh, that is kept locally in the TarSnap cache, and TarSnap, the service, has an encrypted copy. <laughs> of that so you can from just the key recover that cache so you can configure tarsnap uh, to do all sorts of things how am I doing for time 825 okay uh, okay depending on which version of Unix you're using you'll have a tarsnap.conf somewhere and this lets you do things like humanize numbers. I don't want to see bytes. I want megabytes and gigabytes. And I'll, I'll yeah. turn that off for my scripts that process the output. Uh, I also don't want to back up my core files uh, because they'll sit in TarSnap forever. <laughs> and they're pretty much unique. Pretty much unique. Uh, I run dynamic DNS on bind for DNSSEC, so I don't want my bind dynamic files backed up because there, there's no value in those. And there's, there's, if you look at your system for 10 minutes, you'll come up with half a dozen things for your environment that you don't want backed up. Slash proc. I'm sorry? Slash proc. Slash proc. Do, well, TarSnap actually has by default, it will not back up slash proc. It has the insane file systems option that will say, oh, yes, I really want to do this stupid thing. <laughs> so you can. Um, TarSnap tightly adheres to the, the Unix philosophy of it does not prevent you from doing stupid things because that would also stop you from doing clever things. So, TarSnap has five modes. How many of you have read the Tar Man page? How many of you have tried to read the Tar Man page? <laughs> create, to create an archive. Delete, delete an archive. List, see what's in an archive. Extract, remove files from an archive, or uh, extract files from the archive and read which is dump the archive to standard in and do terrible things to it this is exactly like tar which is one of the reasons i really like it uh, it also has a couple options that are useful list archives and print stats with list archives you, you can see what archives you have created and what's on the system. Uh, and then print stats. This is off of my mail server. My, my, all of the backups I have together, if I was to sit down and extract them all, it would be 351 gigabytes. However, 
thanks to deduplication, I'm paying for 5.7 gigabytes of storage. So at, that at a whole 25 cents a month. At a whole 25 cents a month well, per gigabyte. So I'm pay, per gigabyte. I'm paying less than a dollar and a half. Um, my time for managing backups is worth a lot more than a dollar and a half. Uh, I've told Colin repeatedly that he needs to raise his rates. And he, he has this funny idea that he's making enough money. Hmm. And, and as an American, I, I don't quite <laughs> see how these two words go together. But, but OK, he's Canadian. Ah, so explains everything. Right. <laughs> so, I have your attention. The time is now 8.30 and the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 p.m. Please be advised that the internet connections will shut down approximately 10 minutes before closing. Thank you. <laughs> now they just shut down the connections. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Usually they shut down the entire so, internet. They have 30 minutes until they really... The we have 20 off. minutes until they shut off the internet and 30 minutes until they release the hounds. So I duplicated that slide. You got a question for you? Yes. I know you have dates stamped on here. Yes. So are those date stamps your local client or is that like the central server? Or, you know, those dates. Different sites in different time zones. Are they? I gave these I create the archives and I assign the time, the names of the files. For my own sanity, all of my archives mm -hmm. have a timestamp in them. Because if you have backups, uh, I have backup run every single day. Uh, if I was to name my backup, mail backup, mail backup to another <laughs> mail backup, uh, Friday's mail backup, another Friday's mail backup, uh, no, no, that, that's just, that way lies madness. So, I want to see what's in a particular archive. Tarsnap minus TF and an archive name. And it will dump out the files. Or sorry, it will dump out the names of the files in the archive. <coughs> so, some other features. Uh, Tarsnap has regular expression support. You can use command line options and say, yes, I have a backup of Etsy. I want to substitute the string Etsy uh, with the string old Etsy and not overwrite my existing Etsy even if I run it from the root directory accidentally, which I really shouldn't do, but uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and, and in all fairness, uh, I think, I suspect everybody in this room has done something like that at least once. Mm -hmm. But we've done the outcome of that. We haven't even <laughs> gone back and done the regular expression to protect ourselves. Ah, yes. That's You've made the mistake. You haven't corrected the mistake. Well, <laughs> they say wisdom is the ability to recognize your mistakes when you make them. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Tarsnap has include and exclude statements that will let you filter exactly what you want to back up. It also honors the no dump flag, uh, which was intended for the dump program. Has anyone here used dump? <laughs> Dump and restore. Dump and restore. Dump and restore. Uh, only out of, only because I had to. Um, nobody uses these programs anymore. No. But the no dump flag is a useful thing that says, don't back this up. Don't back up this directory. Don't back up this whatever it is. Um, Tarsnap also lets you use wildcards to say, back up these things, not these other things. And it will do dry runs, which means you can do things such as, if I was to delete my yearly archive from 
2008, 2009, and 2010, how much would I really be saving? Because thanks to the deduplication, some of those blocks from 2008 might still be in use today. Uh, I have some email that from 1995, I probably have some from 1985 somewhere in my system. <clears throat> uh, I'm sure that some of those blocks are, are still going to be in use. So. Does anyone want to see this book while, it's, uh, while we're still here? Take a peek in. Pass it around. Mm -hmm. No, the, no, they're they're already horrified by DNS. <laughs> let alone adding DNS sec. Yeah. Uh, so, the TarSnap service. What do they know? Well, some three-letter agency, some Canadian three-letter agency comes, pounds on the door, and says, uh, excuse me, but we'd really appreciate it if you'd show us what you have uh, on this. And, and we have a very politely word, worded warrant or some other three-letter agency comes to Amazon and says, give us everything on this. What do they know? They know how many blocks of data you've stored. They know how often you connect. They know how many machines you've backed up. They know your email address. And perhaps your PayPal account or a credit card information, you know, whatever they've kept. And they know how much is in your account, which, you know, if you have $3.98 left, uh, and that's all. Now, what we have data privacy is a huge issue these days. I would not expect Colin, the, the architect and owner of TarSnap, to go to jail to protect my information. Uh, that, that's an unreasonable thing to ask of anyone. Uh, especially since Colin is kind of the anti-Chuck Norris. <laughs> he's, this, he's this little guy, and he looks like if you sneeze too hard on him, he might break. But with what he, he can gleefully provide every scrap of information he has on you, and it will do anyone else no good whatsoever. And again, you have the source code. You can verify what you sent to them. So, I wasn't sure how timing would go, so I kind of lumped things together in uh, a slide here. Deduplication and compression. Compression works by removing redundancy from files. Deduplication works by removing redundancy from files. But they do these in completely different ways. If you back up files in TarSnap, don't compress them. If you take a text file and you make a gzip of it, you get a compressed file, that's fine. If you take that same text file, you add one character to the end that completely changes the, the compression algorithm's results. Mm -hmm. And the resulting tarball is completely different than the first tarball. Or sorry, the first compressed file. I do a MySQL dump of my WordPress sites every day. Uh, and I back that up as straight text. Because it only adds a few megabytes of text every day because, you know, the massively popular discussion forums <laughs> that I provide uh, are, are incredibly efficient and don't need much more space than that. Uh, so, and then I, I keep those plain text files for a couple days and then Cron throws them away. Uh, and why do I only keep two days worth? Because if I want a WordPress dump from six months ago, I go call it out of TarSnap. 
It's still there. Um, just like any other backup system, you want to make sure files are cold before you back them up. Don't back up MySQL InnoDB files. Uh, you, you should know this, but it applies to Tarsnap too. You can also make keys that have a limited function, like a Tarsnap key that can only create archives. That way, if some cretin breaks into your system and says, I'm going to destroy the system and the backups, <coughs> and I know how to use Tarsnap, he logs in and says, okay, fry all the archives. Well, no, the key on this machine can only create archives. Um, you have a separate machine that you destroy archives on. Uh, that, that can be a useful feature for some environments. Uh, there are several scripts to rotate log files. I use ACTS. Yes? So I'm curious if you could take one system that is hidden off in your private network and back that up using a different system that has access to the internet. You like pull the data and then send it off. You can, anywhere you can run tar, you can run tar snap. So, if you're no, sharing what files saying, with NFS... What, he, what he's saying is, can you have it dump the files instead of ship them off, and then have another machine ship them off? If, and I understand why you would want to do that, because I've ran into that before, too. Uh, if you can run tar on it, you can run tar snap on it. I think it's... I, I think the question was... You're, you're missing it. it. Yeah, I probably am missing the question. If you can't reach line? the server, can you run tar snap offline? That was the question. You have to have TCP connection to a particular port okay. on the TarSnap okay. server. This was a discussion of air gap machines. Ah, air gap machines, you have a problem. This is not the tool for you. Um, every so often, someone will ask TarSnap uh, mailing list or call in a question along the lines of, how can I hide my TarSnap traffic? Uh, the tool is not designed for that. If you do not want your employer to know that you are using TarSnap, you probably should not be using TarSnap. <laughs> um, using multiple archives, you can restore any archive that you've kept. Oh, I know what that line meant, sorry. One machine can have any number of archives, just like tarballs. I back up home separately from Etsy name D, separately from Varmail. Okay, just a word on restores. Untested backups are not backups. At 25 cents a gigabyte to download, you can, and with Virtual box. You can afford to test your restores. <clears throat> Please do so. Um, so, that's our very brief 20 minute overview of TarSnap. Any questions? When yes? Run, is it right as you run the command to create the archive? Is that right then it gets uploaded? Yes. You are actively interacting with the TarSnap service as you run TarSnap minus CF or XF or whatever. Is it the same archive? It's held on your computer and held? Uh, the archives are not held on your computer at all. Each block is shipped off as it is created and deduplicated. There, there is no temp file on your server. There is a cache file to say what has been sent. So if you have an interrupted internet connection, it will know where to pick up. Uh, if you have an interrupted internet connection, TarSnap has a checkpoint feature that will say how far it's gone. And you can adjust the checkpoints depending on how well your internet works. The yes, sir? The physical location of this is Amazon? Amazon. And, and so do we know where that is? Is that in the U.S.? Or that is in the U.S. Um, 
Charsnap itself is a Canadian company. And the Amazon backend is not likely to change anytime soon. And before the internet goes down, I'm going to, I'm going to keep taking questions until after they shut us off. But I want to give a book away to whoever has the most horrific backup system. <laughs> and I don't run backups is not a backup system. <laughs> oh, not you again. <laughs> no, I was going to suggest I have the perfect backup. I don't do anything worth saving. Hey. Oh. Not doing anything worth saving is an excellent backup system. Um, I'm going to suggest you pick up a hobby in meat space. Five and a library will be closing in 15 minutes at 9 p.m. Library internet connections will shut down approximately 10 So, someone. Has a horrible battle. Oh no, I, I have a question. Oh. Also, yeah, I've got uh, about two terabytes of uh, music in that. Then I'm backing up to a three terabyte drive. Thank you. And uh, I'm trying to do incremental backups on that as well, and it's not working out terribly well. You're First backing up two terabytes of music to a three gig drive with three incremental. Three terabyte drive, sorry. Three two, terabyte drive. Three terabyte drive, incremental backup. Yeah, that's not good. I'm sorry? I Okay. If you have lost data on your backup system, Still, if you've lost data on your backup system, you have a horrific backup system. Oh, yes. I got one. All right. How about, how about an old Linux implementation that was RAID, RAID 5, about five 600 gig worth of crap, the backup USB 1.0 on a USB drive? <laughs> the that never, that never finished. USB I, one I to R six. <laughs> okay, Dad. It, so far, you're in the lead. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just going to say I have data backed up on eight inch discs that one of these days I'm plugging. Eight inch floppy eight inch floppy disks. <laughs> okay, uh, David. Yes, sir. I had a friend who never really backed up. He had a RAID five system. He had two discs fail at the exact same time. Wow. Two disks failing on a RAID 5 happens. That's why we have RAID 6. But That's why we have backup. I, I have to go with Mr. 8-inch floppy. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, we need to get moving. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm, I'm really glad to get this book because I look at the other one and you write well. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm around for questions after, but we have to start picking up, and Jim is telling me to shut up. So, thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you.